This episode of Minor Obsession is brought to you by the UNC Charlotte Belk College of Business, North Carolina's Urban Research Business School. As alumni of Belk College ourselves, we encourage you to visit belkcollege.uncc.edu and learn how Charlotte's Business School can inspire your career path. What's up, Niner Nation? Welcome to another edition of Minor Obsession. We've got a special basketball edition for you. Men and women's basketball is doing some great things. Getting ready for the last couple games of the regular season. Going into the conference tournament. And they are both right up there looking good. We had a chance to talk to some key contributors on both sides of the ball. Let's start with women's basketball, who is doing awesome. 17-7 and overall record. Won their last two games at Alton Arena. Really on a hot streak. Yeah. Exciting chance to catch up with none other than head coach Kara Consuegra. Love getting a chance to talk to her. And she had some really interesting things to say. Talked a little bit about the wins that they've accomplished recently how they started conference usa a little slower than she'd liked and talked about some key players going down the stretch and what the end of the season looks like so i really loved what she had to say it's got me fired up to see how the rest of the regular season goes and and the women's team moves into postseason play Uh, so with that let's hear what she had to say So joined today by head coach of one of the hottest basketball teams in Conference USA currently, Coach Kara Consuegra. How are you doing today, Coach? I'm doing great. Good to uh, be back talking with you all. Feeling good after a huge victory over one of the top-seeded teams yesterday? You know, your Sunday is always a little more enjoyable when you get a win on Saturday night. There's no doubt about that. Well, I imagine you've had a pretty enjoyable week or two here. You're coming off six games of wins out of the last seven, and the the one you didn't win, you took to overtime. So super impressive stretch of seven games there after a tough start to the new year. What do you think's been the change with the team that's really propelled you into this nice little stretch of wins? Well, the truth is we weren't really that far away. I mean, it's easy to look at the start of our conference you know, season and say, you know, they were struggling well. Yeah, we had two uh, losses where we didn't play well, but then our other two losses were one possession games. I mean, we had the ball, um, advanced timeout with the possession to tie both of those games to put into overtime and actually got great looks and the ball didn't go down. Um, and that's the way it bounces sometimes. So, um, you know, it's, it, it, we've been playing well, but we easily are, you know, you add the UTEP game in and we easily could be 11 and two rather than eight and five. Um, so the truth is, I, you know, we weren't that far away. I do think, you know, during that stretch early in January where we lost those couple of close games and we did have two games where we didn't play well, middle, middle Tennessee and um, FAU, we were struggling mostly on the offensive end. Um, statistically, you can look at us, during that time, we didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, we didn't share the ball well. We weren't executing. And I think we just started to put too much pressure on ourselves uh, because we had such a great non-conference, and then we get to conference play and probably didn't start exactly how we all wanted to. And, and we started to really, really just press. And when you start to press, you don't play. You just can't play like yourself. And, um, you know, after we lost at FAU, we had a, we had a big team meeting on the road uh, after our practice preparing for FIU. And just talked about, you know, we, we need to get back to worrying about our culture in Charlotte women's basketball, what that should look like and what our culture is, rather than focusing on our outcome and focusing on our missed shots or our missed free throws or our mistakes. And I think once we really got our kids to buy into that shift of this is our culture to outwork, to out hustle, to focus on one day at a time, the process, rather than everything else that was surrounding us in terms of the outcome. Once we shifted their mindset, uh, we've, been a, we've been a very different team and, and really a team that looked like we were in the non-conference when we were playing really well. 
two players I've really keyed in on over that stretch of the last seven games I wanted to talk to you about quickly and get your thoughts. Octavia Jet Wilson, affectionately called Tay, she's been on a tear, averaging 12 points over the last uh, seven game span there, and a few of those games have been closer to the 20 point range. What what have you seen out of her recently? You know, she just she just kind of has gotten a fire under her. The way that she's been playing is what we all knew she was capable of, and I might have shared this with you the last time I spoke to you. I can't remember, uh, but Tay had a really difficult off season. She got sick. Um, and it was a weird illness and that we couldn't really figure out what was wrong with her. And she missed the entire summer and couldn't, really couldn't do anything. Lost a ton of weight. I mean, it was really, it was really bizarre. And thankfully we got her, her healthy again, but it really affected her ability to be ready going into the season. I mean, she was still trying to get in shape and get her strength back and her rhythm back and all that. And, and so she wasn't quite the kid that we're used to seeing in the non-conference. And she had her moments, uh, but she was really inconsistent. And I think, you know, as we got into conference play, she just really, like I said, is really fully back to herself. And, you know, Christian Heights went down with an ankle injury a couple weeks ago, and that just opened up the opportunity to put Tay into the starting lineup. And um, when that happened, I think she just really got her confidence back. And you just combine all that together, and she's played – extremely well she's been a great leader on the court she's taking great shots and I think that's been a big thing for her she hasn't settled for long jumpers or threes she's getting to the rack she's creating great shots for herself and her team and uh, defensively she's played really well so uh, just happy for her you know not surprised either because we knew it was in her So the other one I wanted to get your thoughts on, I haven't talked about her in the past with you, but freshman Koenig, she uh, doesn't get a ton of playing time, but has come up clutch like in the UTEP game, hit a couple threes there that really helped propel you guys to to cut into that deep deficit you were in late in the game. How important has it been to get her some playing time and see some of that on the court three-point shooting ability she's got? Well, anytime you can get a kid in the game that can shoot the three, I mean, it it helps you. It stretches the floor, it makes it harder to defend, and the UTEP game is a great example just because of the way that they were playing. They they bring a lot of help off of almost everybody. So that was a game where we said, okay, we got to make sure we get Callie in and get her minutes. You know, she's a freshman. She's still fighting for minutes with you know, all the guards on our roster, but she's done a really good job putting herself in a position where we feel confident to play her depending on the game and the matchup. And that's just an example where we knew – we put her in the game, they weren't going to pay enough attention to her and her ability to knock down the three. And uh, she gave us some tremendous minutes uh, in that game, but um, also pretty consistently in the last couple of weeks, being able to, to play well when we've gotten her in the game and gotten her minutes. And again, not, not a surprise to us. I mean, you know, anytime you, know, you, you pay attention to kids in practice, you pay attention to kids and how they prepare and you know, maybe they might not be playing at some point, but you're, you're watching her every day. And Callie's a kid that every day prepares. If you came to practice and watched her, you would never think that she wasn't a starter because of the way that she prepares and gets herself ready. And then when, whenever I call her number, she's ready to go. And because of that, she's been really productive for us. And in general, 30% from downtown for the season for for the team, which is not an unusually high average, uh, but it seems like the three-pointers are coming when you need them most. You've got Jade, other players hitting them when, when it matters, but not jacking them up when, when the situation doesn't account for itself. So been really impressive to see that type of clutch shooting come out in the past several games as well. Well, I think we've been doing just a much better job finding finding good shots for ourselves. Uh, we we know who we are. We're not a team that's going to come out and make 15, you know, threes in a game. It's going to that would be rare. Um, you know, we know what our strengths are, and at this point in you know the middle of February, you know your bread and butter. And you know, I think our kids have really accepted that and and done a really good job of you know finding great shots. And when we're shooting threes, they're open threes. You know, Mariah is probably taking the most contested threes on the roster, but that's you know, normal. She's our she's our best shooter, and so people are really locked in on her and contesting her and making it tough for her to get a lot of open looks. But other than that, most of the rest of our threes really in these last two you know couple weeks have been open because we're, we're finding the right looks, we're sharing the ball correctly, we're giving up contested shots for an open shot, and um, you know anytime you're going to take 
open, in-rhythm shots, you're going to have a much better opportunity to make them. So transitioning to uh, looking ahead to the next week or so, headed towards quote-unquote bonus play. It's done a little bit differently than the men's basketball where it was actually decided in December due, uh, with the coaches' poll. Uh, but a tough schedule for you, three out of the final five games against top opponents. What's your game plan going into that, that tough stretch to end the season? Yeah, it's tough. But the most important thing is we, we just have to worry about controlling what we can. Uh, we can't control, you know, who they decided to match us up with. But we also need to look at it as an opportunity. I mean, we have a fantastic opportunity starting Thursday playing Old Dominion, who is now first in the league after we knocked off Rice. And that was a team that we had beat for 36 minutes at their place and just lost control of that game down the stretch. And so it starts with that. And um, I think what we've done over the last couple of weeks is kept our kids focused on one day at a time. And within that one day, trying to win our film session and then win our warm-up and win our practice, win our recovery, whatever it is, be our very best at that. And, and, and truthfully, that's what we have to do. We can't look at you know, who we're going to play after Old Dominion and you know, how, how tough our, our schedule is and this and that. Like that, that stuff, is, it doesn't matter. What matters is how we approach every single day. And um, if, if we continue to do that, the rest will take care of itself. And Halton has been friendly to both basketball teams this year, hoping to get another chance to knock off now, as you mentioned, the top seed as your next home game. How important is it to be able to have those tough matches at home in front of the, the 49er fans? It's huge for us. I mean, our crowd uh, last night when we, when we beat Rice uh, was just incredible. It was electric. I mean, we had just a, a fantastic, a fantastic number of people there. I mean, it was you know, a special game for us. We did our place with Kay and our wearing pink and, you know, had breast cancer survivors and fighters there. And, and so it was a special environment for sure. But, you know, I thought our fans really, really helped us in terms of providing energy and pushing our kids and celebrating when we had great moments. I mean, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, that's what Halton can be. You know, when our, when our fans come out, they are great. And, um, you know, really hopeful – to be able to have a great opportunity, especially, you know, with the men not playing again until Saturday now, you know, that opens up, I think, a Thursday night where everybody can come out again and support us against, and like I said, who's the team that right now is first in the league. Yeah, it's definitely tough when women and men are constantly playing at the same time or overlapping time. So I'm excited for uh, a week or two where there's not so much overlap. Me too. I might actually get to see our men play, which I would love to do <laughs> and I haven't been able to do. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to chat with me, uh, Coach. We look forward to seeing how the next couple games go as we close out towards uh, conference tournament time and hope to catch up with you maybe just before conference tournament time to hear your thoughts on, on what the postseason play looks like. Sounds great. I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you, thank you very, much. very much. Really great to hear Coach Consuegra's thoughts on the rest of the season. Now moving on to men's basketball, had a chance to catch up with another great coach, and the men's team looking hot as well, 14-11 currently, strong at home, not so strong on the road, but poised in fifth place in Conference USA heading into bonus play. Scott, what you got? Yeah, so I, I talked to Vic Safera, an assistant coach for, for the Niners, and he had a lot to say. We talked a little bit about that that home and away record and uh, some players to watch out for and what you could do as a 49er fan. Get out there, come to Halton Arena, and he kind of gave us his sales pitch on that. So with all that said, let's take a listen from Vic. So we got a really special guest with us today to talk a little bit about what's going on with men's basketball. We've got assistant coach Vic Safera. Vic, welcome to Minor Obsession. Thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. I'm actually uh, I'm a longtime listener and first time caller, if you would, uh, to the show. So thanks for having me on. Love it. We'll do a little Baba Booey or something for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, exciting time right now for the men's basketball team. We've matched our total wins in the last two seasons combined already, and we're in the the top portion of the the bonus play now, which is pretty exciting. What yeah. can we expect uh, over the next couple of weeks? 
Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, um, obviously, it doesn't take a, an expert to understand that we've been, you know, it's kind of been a tale of two teams, one team at home and one team on the road. And we're, we're trying to work through those things. I think part of that is still the, the youth of this team. I mean, it, we can't forget that this is a team that has nine new players on the roster um, this year. Not a lot of shared experiences together. The guys that are returners are still young, you know, in their own right and, and haven't really been in this position in terms of being a contender in this league so I think what you can expect would be more of the same that I would expect from from this team and that's just they're they're gonna lay it out on the line now does that guarantee any results no but I I do think that they're gonna you know really prepare well for these these next four games or these last four games and you know just lay it out on the line for for the fans and so question for you that I'm sure everyone talks about including you guys in the in the locker room What's the difference between home and away? Halton twelve and one, obviously on the road, not not quite as hot. What what's the difference there? Why does the team uh, seem to get so energized at home? You know, ever since we got the job, people have been telling me about Halton magic, and uh, shoot, I never realized that it would be this strong. You know, <laughs> uh, I, I think it's been a, a great home court advantage this year and uh, you know I don't I, I can't answer that you know every team kind of goes through its own thing and you know obviously I, I, I think the energy of the building does help I think it energizes us both on the offensive end defensive end probably even more so on the defensive end where it's just it's so unnatural to play the way that we ask our players to play and it does take a lot of internal kind of you have to be a self-starter so on the road it's definitely more challenging to get up for that task while that's not an excuse it's it's just definitely a little bit easier at home to do that so with bonus play coming up can you call 14 and 1 at home for the season north texas i know they're the top team in the conference we played them pretty strong this weekend <laughs> yeah i don't think you guys are gonna be able to peg me for that one but, <laughs> but uh shoot i'll take more halt magic if, uh, any any day of the week so i hope so so you talked a little bit about the the class and how nine new players one specific one i wanted to talk about was jameer young just got named for the seventh week as conference usa freshman of the week can you talk about his maturity and what do you expect from him in the next couple of games going into the conference tournament yeah no somebody that was just really prepared for this this stage this moment jameer's been really impressive and it, it shouldn't go as a surprise to to basketball people, you know, people that understand where he's coming from and his pedigree. This is, this is a guy that didn't even start regularly on his AAU team, you know, that he played behind really good players. He had to compete. He had to scratch and claw for everything that he got, both on the high school level, because he played for one of the best high school programs in the country at the Matha Catholic and in a tough league where every game is, is just, it's like this, it's like college basketball. And then on the AU circuit, he played at the highest level on the Nike UIBL circuit, which just features, you know, college players and pros every single year. So he, he was really ready for this stage. And that's probably the biggest difference between him and maybe some other freshmen around the league is, um, you know, just his level of preparation for this moment, even though he wasn't the guy, you know, uh, at his high school necessarily or in his AU team. So um, I would expect more of the same from him. Of course, he is a freshman. You know, he's not going to be perfect. He might have a, a bad game here and there, but his consistency has been really impressive. So speaking of players, just a few more people I wanted to touch on. Jordan Shepard, redshirted last year, didn't actually get to play. I know we lost a, a big player with John Davis. So we've got a redshirt junior in him and then the two graduate transfers. Can you talk about how uh, Bamba and Edwards and Shepard have kind of been the leaders of the team? Or is there someone else I'm missing that's kind of a, a key leader as well? No, I think um, I think Malik and Cooper Robb, both guys that played in the rotation last year, I think they're definitely a part of kind of that leadership committee. Granted, they're only sophomores, but they had the most experience of playing under us and on, in the system. So I think you could add those two into the mix. But um, a- adding Drew and Bamba was huge in that spring last year, bringing those guys on as graduate transfers, just their level of maturity, obviously basketball experience, but they both understand you know what it takes to to win at this level what it takes to be a teammate 
you know, to play a role at this level. So that was huge for us. And they've been guiding our younger guys through this whole process. And then with Shep, obviously with him being able to sit out and, and practice for us all year last year, he was a, a heck of a scout team player, you know, for our guys to go against last year. They had to keep him out of the lane. And you see some of the athletic things that he does on the court. That's, you know, what, how we were prepping for opponents last year is going to get up against him. So, you know, no, all, all of those guys have played a huge part this year in terms of the that leadership role in the locker room. So for all the fans that, you know, might have been a fan of the program before our, our recent kind of struggles that know that we have, you know, two bonus games left, what what's your sales pitch to them to, to come out to Halton Arena and see this team play? Yeah, no, we uh, we we need them. You know, we need any any advantage we could get. We are obviously we're uh, one of five teams in this top pod, which is a new system that fans might not be super aware of. But we are we are fighting for something. We're the top four teams in this um, this league after this pod play will get a buy in the conference tournament. And obviously, we all know that, you know, the conference tournament is really what it's all about at the end of the day. There's we always talk about it. There's multiple races to be run throughout the season. We talk about the non-conference race. Then we talk about conference play. This is kind of its own little race in itself, this pod play race. And it all leads up to that conference tournament race at the end. And uh, you just want to be clicking and playing good basketball at the end. But if you have to play one less game in that tournament, you know, on back-to-back-to-back nights, that certainly helps your chances of of advancing, you know, so we, we need our fans. We need that home mag- magic, you know, coming strong in those two out of four games that are at home. So for those not familiar with the pod play, because I know last year we were in the, the bottom bracket for that, does, does the record reset and whoever has the top records kind of move in on that? And then whoever's last in the, the pot of five is still a five seed. You don't, you can't move further down out of the five. Correct. Right? Correct. You can move up within your pod, but you can't move below five. So we're at fourth place right now. So if the season were to end today, we would get that uh, first round conference tournament by, but unfortunately we got the four, four more games. So we got to keep, keep that rolling. And uh, so we are playing a lot, obviously right now at Florida international is fifth place. So they're scratching and clawing to, uh, to take our place in that spot. Got it. Well, that's really exciting stuff. We appreciate you calling in anything else you'd like to tell the fans, uh, anything else that we missed that, that you think everyone should be looking out for when they, they go to those two games at Halton which are, let me make sure I get the dates right, March 1st and March 4th. Yeah. That, yeah. Those are the dates, so not, yeah. Not till March. So, unfortunately, we have to wait a little bit to, to get to our, for our first home game in this segment. But, no, obviously, this is a big jump for our program to go from being in that last pod last year. And, and we were scratching and clawing in our own right last year, too, to try to make the conference tournament. And, unfortunately, we just missed just short of that last year. But this is a big jump to, to take this many new guys. And, and, you know, we'd be we'd be lying if we told you we knew this was going to happen we'd get in the top bot this year it, it took a lot of work so even though you know this last weekend didn't go as as planned and, and obviously these road games have been a challenge as they have been for everybody in our league you know we we do have to keep perspective we have to remember you know where we are coming from and, and of course we never settle you know we're gonna keep fighting and keep scratching and clawing to uh, to get to the top or to, to get to where we want to be as a team wherever our potential can take us you you always we talk about as a, as a staff you always just want to reach the full potential that your group can achieve and sometimes that's you know uh fourth place sometimes that's first place sometimes it's in the middle of the pack but wherever that that you know talent kind of barrier takes you you want to try to max out on that so we're, we're still in that process we're still in that process of becoming the team that we want to be and uh, i just want to let our fans know to uh, to be encouraged you know where we're going but not to be satisfied and uh we're going to keep scratching and clawing with them and, and we hope they do the same with us well we really appreciate it it's been a great run so far I'd just like to let you know i am undefeated when i go the only game i missed at home was Asheville, and i went to wilmington so I'm, like I'm part it. of the I lucky like charm it. <laughs> you know, I saw the new sign at the last game. So you mm. couldn't miss it. That was some good artwork on, on there, too. And you guys are, are doing a great job with the minor obsession deal. So keep it going yourself, and uh, we're, we're big fans. Oh, well, we appreciate it, and we definitely have to get you back on the podcast for a, a breakdown of your interesting career path and, and what you have yet to come. 
Sounds good. Sounds good. I just want to be a, a co-podcast host sometimes. Oh, uh, whenever you're ready, just man. Learn from you guys. Yeah. Oh, we we definitely want you in here, especially you know <laughs> once uh, once we get this out, maybe we can start maybe next season or even into the conference tournament, maybe getting like a biweekly update from you and what's going on there with the team. Go. There we go. I like it. And like recruiting it. too. We we definitely want to hear about recruiting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there's there's some exciting stuff happening there too, and we'll uh, we're, we're working every day to to try to put a product out, out there on the floor that you guys can be proud of. Well, we definitely are. It's it's a whirlwind. Even you know, just last year to this year, just seeing everyone buy in, and it even if we lose, you could see the effort never ends. Even even last year, I remember I was telling Coach Sanchez with Davidson at Davidson, we got crushed but we never quit we played really hard and then yeah. you know this year Supico went crazy and we we dominated them so yeah, yeah. it was no, a great turnaround a to our guys i mean really you can have the greatest game plans in the world and all that stuff you can have a plan but those are the guys that have to go out there and execute it so that's that's really a credit to the student athletes absolutely well i think you guys are definitely you know part of you know, watering that, that seed and, and helping yeah. it bloom. So we appreciate it. We love watching you guys out there, and we're definitely yelling at the refs at Halton Arena just for you guys. I love so it. We got I your love back. It. I love it. Thanks so much. <laughs> well, thank you again. We really appreciate it, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Take care, guys. All right. Have a good one.